a note to everyone watching. Um, today, I'm going to be making a belt to hold bullets, but not real bullets. These are fake movie prop bullets. This one is cast in resin. Um, many of the ones I'll be utilizing are actually uh, brass and uh, aluminum or acrylic, but nothing about these could ever become a real bullet. They are, uh, they are props, they are BSOs, bullet-shaped objects. Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with another build associated with my Samaritan pistol. And this is all about the bullets. The bullets! Yes, that was a Harry Styles reference. Um, I have them in multiple groups here. These are the original bullets that came with the various uh, sideshow replicas that I have purchased over the years. Uh, I have 15 of those. I would have 16, however, in order to... I would have 16, however, in order to cut out the proper shape of the bullet, I cut one of these uh, zinc uh, bullets in half. These are the bullets that I built. These are turned in brass and aluminum. I have uh, 13 of those. These are some unbelievable clear faced, clear tipped bullets built by my friend Victor Broadley. Um, Victor did all the engraving on the bottom of these bullets and it's stunning and we covered that in another video. I've got four clear bullets from him, one dum-dum, which is kind of amazing, a hollow point. I have eight bullet blanks, six of which are engraved. I have two bullet blanks from Victor, which are just slightly different in their machining than mine. Um, that's how I tell them apart. Uh, I have six clear blanks that I was planning to make clear bullets with, and I've got my first bullet. So over here, I've got, uh, let's see, 15 and 13 is 28, uh, 33 plus another, 10, 43, okay, let's say I've got 45 bullets. Just, just to cover ourselves. I know that Hellboy had all those bullets in the, in the packages, in the vacuum form packages in his, um, in his case inside the BPRD van. And I have done up the graphic for those cases and I'm going to make one of those. I'm gonna make a couple of those because they're, they're fun and they're really cool. But I also think that Hellboy needs a bullet belt. I think that there should be a bullet belt to go with. And we've never seen it in the BPRD universe, but Hell's Bells, Margaret, I think that it is a worthy thing to show off all these bullets to make a really nice bullet belt for them out of leather. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna make a bullet belt. We're gonna break out the leather toolkit. We're gonna work on this new workbench and we'll get all these bullets lined up so everyone can see them. So to walk you through, here is one of the original Hellboy bullets. You can see it's casting, it's not super flat, but they're metal, they're heavy. They feel the part. When I first got these, I thought they were really neat. I just don't like that they're painted brass. I mean, obviously they had to do that manufacturing wise. Here you can actually see, this is the one that I cut in half. You can see how they did it. It's poured as a, uh, probably poured into a, a set of plug molds and then uh, the back end is glued on. Look at that. And then probably painted with some kind of lacquer. All right, um, that's those here. This is one of mine with the, again, the engraving done by Victor Broadley. Look at how pretty that is, dude. Um, these are all press fits in here. Yeah, awesome. Um, these are Victor's masterpieces with a little bit of silver and white oak in there. Yeah, amazing, so, so pretty. Here is his dum-dum. Dude, that would stop a beast. Yeah, um, all of these bullets are fake. They're all props. They don't have anything to do with real shooting whatsoever. They are simply bullet-shaped objects. Here's one of my uh, unfinished brass casings. It doesn't have the engraving. Here is a brass casing with some engraving. Um, and here is the clear bullet blank that I plan to machine down to fit in there. Um, that ought to work. We will see. Uh, and then here, this. This is my very first bullet. You can see that I had not yet 
worked out that the bullet shape actually extends. Yeah, see, this is just me kind of farting around without the dimensions and not quite getting it right. But I like to keep these things as, uh, I like to keep the, I, you know, I'm a completist, so I keep everything. Yeah. A, uh, a bullet belt is effectively a long belt with a bunch of slots in it. And through those slots, you wind a thinner belt, and that thinner belt is what wraps around the bullets. I also forgot, I've got these six castings. These are original Hellboy castings. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have to make a slot for like 50 bullets here, but we shall see. So many, you know, it's, you get obsessive. I get obsessive, and you don't get obsessive. I get obsessive when I get into projects like this and I just become, like, I want more. I get, you know, I, I, yeah. So that's why that made so many bullets. I don't need all of these bullets by any stretch of the imagination. But like, as I was setting up to do them, I was thinking, well, as long as I'm making five, four, why don't I make eight? As long as I'm making eight, why don't I make 16? And then I was off to the races. All right, that all goes up here for staging. And, I've got some leather material that could make it. Ah, look at that. There's my belt. This is perfect. This is a piece of an old eight, oh God, or nine ounce Latigo. Uh, this is a heavy duty stuff. Um, what did I use this for recently? I can't quite remember, but uh, I have some slightly thinner stuff. I think this will be the, the, the thinner belt that winds up and through. Um, but what I need to do now is cut out this belt. Yeah, so we've got to figure out the shape of this belt. We've got to figure out the spacing of the holes. And then we got to cut the belt and cut the holes. Now, if you remember, when I first made my leather tool kit, my whole goal was that it would fit on the workbench without taking up too much workbench real estate. And I think I'm succeeding there because, look at that, I have access to all these tools. This is the, uh, this is the licensed replica of Hellboy's belt. Um, mine's a little bit darker, but that's fine. I'm gonna weather it. This is actually, my licensed replica has one real Hellboy belt bag on it. This is actually from production. I bought this, uh, can't remember where I bought that. Uh, but I'm going to sort of try and get something close to this for the size of this belt, because I think it should be pretty similar. Um, right, I've got a bullet here. So the bullet was like, yeah, it's almost like, yeah, it's okay. Have my man with no name belt here. I do remember how it's put together. Yeah, I kind of like the size of this. The, thin, the Hellboy belt is two belts. There is an outer belt and an inner belt, and the inner belt is uh, the inner belt is just about an inch and three quarters wide, and the outer belt is about uh, two and three quarters inches wide. Um, I think that this. Interesting. Normally, the uh, the slots in a bullet belt are centered top to bottom on the belt. That's my experience, but I think on this belt, because I want to show off the bullets themselves, I want to be able to see, like, I'm building this belt so I can see all the bullets at the same time. I want to be able to see this clear part. So I don't want the, I don't want the, the, the belt part of this to cover over the bullet. Then I, then I'm making this as a kind of display go with, right? It sort of uh, extends the, the world building. And that means to me that I kind of want to go off center. So I think I'm going to go with inch and three quarters because I like that. Yeah. And I think I'm going to go with, uh, let's see. Maybe I'll go with only three quarters of an inch wide for the interior belt. And what I need is a three quarter inch wide slot cutter. And luckily, because I have one of almost everything, <laughs> I have one here. Let's see. 
Come on. Oh, wow. I haven't pulled the slot cutters out in a while. Okay. Is that three quarters of an inch wide? Look at that. That's exactly the one that I need. Um, or do I go with one slightly larger because it is in my nature to go a little too tight on the tolerance. It is in my nature. And this is a little bit wide. Oh, actually, that's a little bit smaller. Huh. All right. Let's try this one. Better. Bellissimo. Yeah, this is 0.85. Let's give myself a little bit of wiggle room. Now, a strap cutter, a leather strap cutter, is a very simple tool. I still want to build one myself, but it is effectively uh, a couple of pieces of wood with a razor. Can you see the edge of the blade? There you go. That's a little razor in there suspended between the two pieces of wood and a backstop. And all I do is I literally hold this and pull the leather. Have I mounted this upside down? I think I have. At any rate, I pull the leather through this and because I have markings here, uh, I have a specific measurement, this is how I cut out a belt. There are many different strap cutter designs. Terry English had one that he'd been using for years and I really liked it, but it's also, it's terrifying. Ah, uh, it's a lot of strap cutters have these exposed blades and they're just, they spook me to work with. Um, but you know, I can get past that. There, I hear it. Now it's really trick and important as you pull your strap that you maintain that it is flat. This is, <laughs> it's not a tool that does all the work for you. You have to be mindful the whole time you're going. Um, I find leather work to be quite forgiving, however, See, I think that there's a better strap cutter design out there. I just gotta find it and make one. It, it can't be too difficult of a machining project. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so there is a nice big fat strap. This leather, it's about 60% the thickness of this leather. And we're gonna cut out some three quarter inch, no, nope, slightly bigger than that, one inch straps. Is that what I'm doing? Okay. Same drill as the first strap. I'm just going to be. Now, these straps that hold the bullets, these straps, I'm going to need a lot of this stuff because it's going around the bullet like this right? It's going around the bullet like this. So for every bullet, I'm going to need like this much. So if each, if I have 40 bullets, uh, let's say I have 40. What is that? That's um, three in, uh, almost three inches, 120 inches. That's 10 feet. Uh, and that's about maybe 30 inches. So I'm going to need like five of those. This definitely is a method that, like I said, requires some mindfulness, but it is also a method that is super satisfying. Oh my gosh, so satisfying. Yeah, cutting leather straps, really, really fun. Three. Four. And on the assumption that I'm wrong about how many of these I need, I'm going to do six because I've got the leather. Five and razor blade. So I'm just going to do a test here. 
cut a slice off the end. And I'm going to make some marks on this just for reference. If the bullet is that wide, that's where I want the slot to go. So if the slot is, let's say, I'm just coming up with a template here. So the slot goes like this. Oh. Yeah, you can really hear it when it makes it through, can't you? Ooh, ooh. Okay, and that's a little bit thick in the leather department for what I wanted. The slot is uh, collapsing in the middle. Well, let's see if I can. Uh... I'll need to be a little bit of cleanup on the back of these, but you'll never see it. And I might have another slot cutter, which works just a tiny bit better. So we'll, we, we may go for that one. Okay, so clearly I think I have put these a little too close together, a little too far apart. And you can see. I don't like that spread. I want it to be closer in. So I'm gonna do another hole on the other side of this. It gets me to that spot. And I think it's gonna be, yeah, look at that. I was way the hell off. Okay, this one may be better. Let's give this one a shot. All right, so I'm gonna, I like that space. Okay, so I have some spacing to it. While I'm trying to fix one problem, I can actually address the other. So I think this hole spacing is right. And the bullet goes in there, yep. Okay, so that's a much more positive fit. And you can see how nicely it holds. So now what I'm gonna do is this will come across and there'll be a second hole. And that'll be probably right about here. That was way better. So that cutter can totally handle it. Now that worked great. I seem to have resuscitated this cutter so that it worked pretty good. Um, and now what I'm gonna end up doing is making a little template which shows me the spacing that I want. Yeah, see, the thing about this cutter that I like is that it's, um, maybe I do want the other cutter. Now that I'm thinking about it, I mean, here's the thing, is the other cutter, there are always choices you've gotta make. The other cutter is a little looser tolerance, but I've never suffered from loose tolerance. I always suffer from high tolerance from trying to make things to cut too close to each other, right? And so right now I'm having trouble feeding this through but this is roughly what this bullet belt is gonna be, right? We're gonna do that. Maybe there and there, yep. And now you see, now you see what you wanna be. Just have your party on TV. Uh, there we go, that's what I'm thinking of. And I'm gonna do that across this whole belt. So what I need to do now is mark up my belt. In order to make these marks, I am going to use some masking tape. The masking tape will allow me to uh, draw extensively on this belt and not leave permanent marks because I am going to want it to, I don't want to see Sharpie marks on my Hellboy props later. And um, I'm also not being too precious about this leather specifically because it's going to get beaten up. I'm going to weather the crap out of it. Um, this is going to be my marking template, so I'm going to mark it. Marking template! Actually, I go a little bit tighter. A little bit tighter, tiger. All right. 
Ah, there is a, there is a thing that I want to do. Uh, one of the issues I have with my Hellboy bullets is that they're too shiny. Uh, and so I want them a little bit more tarnished like this. And this is a very simple tarnish to do on clean brass. And I'm going to show you. Okay, so when you want to tarnish some brass, you don't need expensive chemicals. All you need is a little bit of white vinegar and a little salt. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour the last of my white vinegar in this container. I'm going to pour some salt in there. Okay, and I'm going to put in all of my bullets. Yeah. And I'm going to let them roll around. That's all the, kind of the point. Just everything kind of, oh yes, yeah, sounds great. And then I'm going to cover it. And I want to kind of, this is all the weathering, yeah. I want to kind of get everything a little bit wet. And then I'll just keep on shaking this during the day. And we'll take a look at the end of the day. Uh, actually, by the time I'm done with the bullet belt, these should be nice and weathered. <sighs> As I'm marking up this uh, belt, um, it's a lot of lines. It's a lot of lines. It's a, this, this is going to be tedious work and that's totally cool. It's worth talking about the tedious work. I love, I love discussing it because there's, uh, it is one of those things, right? Like so much of making, I mean, so much of everything is drudgery. I once, I think I realized a while back that like 90, 80 to 90% of almost every job is drudgery. Really, no matter how much fun the job is, even when I was like working in industrial light and magic and, you know, having the time of my life working with some of my favorite people uh, I've ever worked with, even on Mythbusters, largest portion of the work was tedious and drudgery um, because that's the reality of work. But it, what I've discovered is, you know, when people talk about paying your dues, a lot of people think it means like, oh, well, you just got to pay your dues. It means you have to suffer. But you don't necessarily have to suffer. Um, that's not required. What's required is that you can do the drudgery. Like if you can do the drudgery really well, what happens is about 10 to 20 percent of the time you get to do some really fun stuff. But you got to be able to do both. You, you can't just show up to a company and just ask to do the fun stuff. Can I just design everything and then everyone else builds it? Um, no, because you'll be a better designer if you know how it all goes and you know how it all works. You can't design objects in the vacuum of not knowing how they're made. I mean, you know, I get that there are people that do do that, but I also guarantee you they earn their stripes. Um, but, you know, while drudgery is not necessarily fun, I mean, I'm not like loving having to draw uh, however many lines this is, over a hundred separate lines. And then I'm going to have to punch the same amount of holes. This is, this is going to take a while. My arm's going to get sore. So what I do to uh, make it through this kind of drudgery is I'm always asking myself if I could be doing something a little bit better. So for instance, I was just noticing that I'm holding this hand a little tight and I don't need to. This I just need little light lines. So I'm relaxing a little bit on my left hand so that I don't keep on abusing it into carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, and that's the kind of thing that I spend this kind of drudgery doing, asking myself, oh, is there a slightly better way I could be doing this? Uh, a slightly faster way, how am I doing? Okay, I've got 42 lines to draw. Well, actually it's two per, so it's 84. Um, now they're all marked and you can see I've done a kind of an end there. I'm going to round that later with some, with some edge dressing, but for the time being, I'm just popping the holes in here. Um, yeah, I'm always asking myself if this could be more efficient or simpler. Um, so let's, uh, 
we're going to draw. Okay, the template I am finished with, so I can put it over here in the toy box. <clears throat> and the square I don't need anymore. Uh, the hammer I definitely need. That blade I definitely need. Um, and I want. Let's hold this up. I think. Okay, time to punch 84 holes. I went with 42 bullets because 42, yeah, exactly. 42 is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. For those of you who have read all five books of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy. Yes, there are five books in the trilogy. Stop asking questions. Uh, okay, let's put this one back. punched. They look great. They are fairly even, but I want to add a little bit of detailing to this belt. I'm going to do that with this little edge carver. This is a, this is this lovely little tool. Here it is. And it's got this, it's got this little sharpened hole here. You can set its depth, and this is how you can put in a line for sewing on the edge of leather. This is basically, here's how this works, is you get it started, and it just cuts a nice little, it cuts a nice little line like that. Yeah. And then you can use that line as a sewing guide. That's frequently the way this is used for, but I'm actually just going to use it as an edge detail. So we're just going to go all the way down. Actually, I'm going to move this out of the way. This way I can draw. This way I can draw all the way down. Oh. What happened? Why is it no longer working? Oh, ah, okay. Screwed that up but that's okay, I went too hard. There we go. I'm gonna do this to both sides of the belt and it'll just be like this nice little finish, finish detail. That'll make it feel like someone cared about this thing. Oh. And I end up with this long little stringy string. I do the same thing from the other side. Take me to the other side. You don't have to have a heavy hand with this. This is what I keep discovering with everything I ever learn. The more you're pushing, the more you're forcing, the less finesse you're gonna get. It's just all about the lightest touch that can get the project across the line. I'm going way farther than I need to out here because I'm gonna be putting in a belt buckle over here. Yeah, it's gonna be like, yeah, something like that. Yeah, great. Okay, so now you can see the detail that I've got. I really like that. 
I think that's looks, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, we're going to start with this first one. So come out and back in. Oh, oh, okay. I need a little bit of that blade here. I'm just tapering the edge of this so I can get it in the slot. I will point out, after all my talk of using the uh, the bigger hole punch, I ended up using the smaller one, uh, which is fine. I learned how to make it work, but it's sort of funny. Okay, so I'm going to uh, pop a hole right there. And pop a hole right there, and that's going to be the beginning. Yep. And I'm going to sink a leather rivet into there. Yeah, that's nice and centered. Leather rivet is in, so we're going to pop in the first bullet shape. And I need, hmm, I guess I need some dowels for the bullets. More dogs. So, here is the bullet. The bullet. And now, we're just going to be, I'm going to sharpen the edge here of the beater piece. And I'm just going to start leapfrogging all the way up. You know what? Mm, mm, I need if this is that size, the sideshow bullets here are slightly narrower in diameter than mine, just ever so. And so I'm going to use those for sizing each loop, and then I'll have a little bit of pressure stretch. It's like I'm preloading this just a little bit. That is going to be great. So do this. Uh, you know what, I think I can go to a time lapse here. is uh, turning into a very satisfying build. It looks like a genuine object. I'm very pleased. Uh, I am about to do the final assembly of the buckle. I had this uh, brass buckle, uh, and I'm going to attach it to the belt using four leather rivets. Um, leather rivets, I will, um, I will include a link in the uh, comments for these specific kinds of rivets because I really like them. Um, here is what the two parts look like. There you go. That is the two parts of a leather rivet. So you pop your hole using a hole punch, put this part through, turn it over, put this part on the other side and you give it a good whack with a hammer and they join. Um, continuing my lifelong love affair with rivets of every kind, Rivets are awesome. Now, the in general, uh, in my experience, I always want the hero side to be the, the long side of the rivet. So I line it up till I can see the top part of it. And I put this piece over. Now I use a little uh, a, a slight concavity punch here. And that allows me to do this without over flattening the rivet. There we go. And um, Take a look. It, there, uh, that's what it looks like on the hero side. No, oh, no, that's the back side. And there's the hero side. Now, I, this is just what I have surmised to do from like buying these and trying to make them work. I'm, it's entirely feasible that there is a more correct way to utilize these and to talk about them and that I don't know that way because I had because I am weirdly autodidactical when it comes to utilizing things like this. I'm totally aware that autodidactical is not a word. Yes, my studies have shown me that much. <laughs> okay, so uh, put another ribbon in. 
Once we get all four of these, we'll have made a nice belt. Then we'll pull out the bullets, which should be good and aged by this point, and uh, put them in, and that'll be a one-day build. Uh, yeah, that's that one just a little bit, but that's fine. Yes, you're right. I know you're thinking I should have a BPRD logo somewhere in here. Um, I don't have one prepped right now that could be the thing that I need here, but that's okay. So uh, let's bring this over because eh, that's it. That's what I needed. Okay. Last rivet. And so the this half of the belt goes through here and. <laughs> and I believe I consider that to be a delightfully successful outing for my leather toolkit. Now, at first glance, these are going to look a little too weathered, but that's okay. You can see these look like almost like overly grimy, but that's okay because what's going to happen is we're going to hit these with a rag. I'm gonna pull off most of that dark stuff and leave just a kind of general tarnish that makes it feel like it's something that's kind of old, like that. So instead of this business, which is like unrealistically dark, it's just a basic kind of mild tarnish. That's what I love about this technique. No acids, no uh, toxic stuff, just a little bit of vinegar. So, you know, my shop smells a little bit like sauerkraut right now. All oh, right, well, these are some extra shells I have. I'm gonna make bullets for those, but in the interim, I'll fill up my bullet bolt with all the, the other bullets that I have. These are, again, production cast um, bullets. I would assume that uh, on production, they had hero bullets for close-up shots that were made out of brass and some cast ones that weren't. Let's fill the rest with the sideshow bullets. These are totally sufficient for looking good. Um, there's some fan-made bullets in here too that I purchased when I purchased some of the speed loaders I have. Oh man, yeah, this is a heavy. This is a heavy dude. All right. Oh, actually, that's not going to fit. Okay. So, wow. I'm going to put these there. This, oh my God. Wow, if you had to carry this around, that is heavy. Whoa. Yeah, we once did a story about how many pounds of bullets you would hold, have to hold to like shoot a machine gun like some folks do in the movies. And um, dude, that is, that is not light. <laughs> oh, that is great. Plus I've got, uh, I got some of my bullets here, and then over here I've got Victor Broadley's beautiful silver and oak clear bullets. We've got his dum dum there, production cast. Yeah, a little bit of everything. I uh, I'm very happy, very happy with how this looks. I'm very happy with how it feels. This is like as soon as I started making all those bullets, I was like, I need a good go with to go with this. This is this has got to be a terrific prop, um, and really. 
You should see it with the BPRD logos all etched in the back. It looks stunning. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look. So pretty. Oh yeah, everybody's represented. I am really pleased. Again, none of the bullets in this bullet belt are actual bullets. They are BSOs, bullet-shaped objects, and cannot be fired in any way or used in any way in any kind of firearm. They are simply aesthetic props shaped like something that looks like a bullet, but they are not bullets. And there you have it, Hellboy's Bandolier. I have made a go with that's not part of the cannon. It's now part of my cannon. Uh, thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. It was fun doing a little leather working. And it's nice stuff to do. It smells, it smells like leather. And because of the veneer, it smells like sauerkraut. <laughs> thank you guys for joining me for this. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you'd like to further support us on Tested, there are many ways you can do so. One is through paid membership, and there are several tiers of that, each with their own set of unique bonuses. You can follow the links below for that, or you can go to our merch store where we are always coming up with brand new products. In honor of the holidays, we've got our Tested Ugly sweater in both black and we have a white one. We have some brand new patches and this is a particular type that I made a joke about one day and now it's a reality. You know about merit badges. When you're a Cub Scout or a Boy Scout, you get a merit badge for achieving something. Well, Tested now has demerit badges for when you screw something up because that's just as important in learning as getting something right. So this is the badge for when you measure something once and have to cut it twice. <laughs> this is the badge for when you accidentally hook up your electronics wrong and you release the mysterious blue smoke that powers them and they no longer work. And this one here is for when you get your finger caught in the lathe and it almost gets torn off. That might be quite me specific. I hope that never happens to you. These are all designed by Tested's own Jen Schachter and they are not the only patches we're gonna release. In fact, these are just the beginning. If you have ideas for demerit badges that we should release, We'd love to hear them. We also still have our regular complement of posters and they're all back in stock, including my hand-drawn toolboxes. I love seeing pictures you guys send us of these hanging in your maker spaces and your offices, your man caves and your sheds around the world. Get to the store, follow the links below. And hey, some of these might make great Christmas presents for the makers in your life. Thanks you guys, happy holidays.